Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. I'm out at my front door this morning and I want to get these pots planted. It's getting close to the end of May here and I still haven't done anything with these planters and it's, it's getting really sad. But we really haven't had the opportunity to as technically we're only just hitting our average last frost date tomorrow. And uh, we actually had a risk of frost last night but everything's looking really good and really warm. And it's actually been fairly warm except for last night. And that was because of wildfire smoke was just blocking out the sun. So we just couldn't hold the heat here any longer. But I think, I think I'm safe to plant these out now and I can always put a towel over them. But the plants I'm putting here are pretty sensitive to cold weather. So I wanted to just wait that little extra bit of time to get them planted just in case. So this will be, it looks like it's a full sun location. It's really windy, hopefully you can hear me all right. It looks like a full sun location, but this area only gets about three hours of sun a day. And then it's in pretty much full shade. But when the sun is shining here, because of all the stucco and the white door and everything, there's a lot of heat right here. So I need plants that can handle that. But most of the time it's shade. So let's have a look at those plants and see what I'm gonna be putting here. So I have just a gorgeous selection of plants here. I'm really excited for this combination and to get these planted in these pots. These pots uh, are, the, the larger pot here is about 12 inches across and 12 inches deep and I, like two feet tall. And then the smaller one is only about, I'd say about 10 inches tall um, across in either direction and about 18 inches tall. So I want to get plants in here that'll, that'll fit this space and I think I've probably pulled too many out here but I just wanted to kind of play around with them a little bit and I'll show them to you at the same time show you what I'm thinking and then we'll have a look at how well they fit here I did bring out another pot they're sitting on that I thought about putting beside me here but I just don't like the rim of this pot in conjunction with the ones that I have here so I think I'll just leave it out and, ju and just leave this set up the way it is so let's pull I just had these lanterns here just they were part of my winter display I just left them here to have something other than dirt while I, while I waited to see what I was gonna put out here. So I picked up a selection with several coleus. This one is called Vulcan, and coleus are a great plant to have here because they can take, at least these, all these varieties that I picked up here can take full sun to full shade. So they're a really versatile plant that do quite well. I think there are some coleus that want just shade, so maybe just double check your label, but uh, these, these are all full, full sun to full shade, which makes them really nice to work with. Now I just picked up one of each of these plants. I was with a friend and we were just kind of playing around at the garden center to see, see what we liked together. And this is Vulcan and it has this deep, almost mahogany kind of speckled or modeling in the center with this almost lime green around the outside. So I hope that shows up well for you there. And this gets 14 to 28 inches or 36 to 71 centimeters tall and about 14 to 24 inches wide and I think most coleus are about as tall as they are wide and I was kind of thinking about putting that in the back of this planter here now I, I normally I like to, t to kind of shy away from too dark of things because it is a shady spot but I think that bright kind of lime color on the outside of the leaf will really um, amp this up and then I have this begonia it's called Belagonia cream it gets eight to 12 inches high or 20 to 30 centimeters. You're supposed to space it six to 12 inches apart. So that's about 15 to 30 centimeters apart. And I thought if I just kind of put it towards the front like this, that would be a good height difference. And then I have, this is Tretoscantia. And this is actually a house plant that I have in my house. I'm pretty sure there's two or three separate plants in here. So, I, and they, they'll kind of mound up and fill in. And they have this nice green on the front of the leaf with this purpley at the back, which I think kind of sets off the coloring in these leaves a little bit. And it'll just bring that little bit more brightness to this area. So I thought I could kind of separate it and put one kind of on either side of the begonia. And then I have just a couple of extra little impatiens left over from another planting project. These are, I grew these from seed and they're just seed I've collected over the years. So I'm not sure there's really a branded uh, named variety in here anymore, but I just have a couple. I just thought I'd just kind of stick them in and they'll fill in and just kind of be that next layer down just to fill in the front a little bit on this planter. 
And then for this smaller planter here, I have this coleus and it's called henna. And um, you can see right now it's looking like mostly almost uh, purpley mahogany kind of color with some kind of almost sagey lime green. If it's possible to have sage lime green. But on the tag it shows it as being almost the opposite way. So I'm not sure if, you know, when it gets more shade or more sun, which way it's going to go. But uh, I thought we would stick it in here and either way, I think it'll look really nice. I'd kind of prefer if it got a little bit more of the green. I think that would just make it pop here a little bit, a little bit more. But because I'm going to put this trailing fuchsia, which is called a tumnal, in the front here, I think it'll really work either way. These two really complement each other. And I think they're going to be just absolutely gorgeous together. So this fuchsia has um, pink flowers that'll hang down. Uh, often fuchsia is kind of talked about as like a kind of like a ballerina dress kind of flower. It hangs down and it's quite pretty. Or sometimes people call it the little dancer. And this is a trailing fuchsia. You can also get some that are more upright. But so this one should kind of fill in and come over the sides a little bit. So I had also picked up this coleus is called Inferno. It has almost an orangey red leaf to it. And I'd looked at playing around with this, but I think these colors will work better together. And I also had this Hookera. Uh, this is Carnival Cinnamon Stick. And again, it would work in here. And I might, we'll see how much room I have, but I think it might make this just a little bit too full. I thought it might give a little bit more softness to the edges and we'll see if I need that once I get this kind of started I might add this in the front just to kind of hang down it won't get super big what is it 10 to 12 inches 10 to 12 inches tall 25 to 30 centimeters or 14 to 16 inches wide which is about 36 to 41 centimeters so I could kind of squeeze it in here these plants aren't here. We don't have a super long season, so they're only going to be here probably till the end of August, beginning of September at the most, before it's going to be too cold for them. So it's just a few months, really. I can kind of pack them in full, and being a shade area, they tend not to uh, fill in quite the same as some sun-loving plants might uh, with their root systems and that. So I have some fresh soil. Um, I'll just kind of take out a small layer of soil in these pots and put some fresh soil in. I don't need to replace all the soil in these pots. The roots aren't going all the way down. That's just a waste of soil. And I have just some all-purpose uh, fertilizer. This one has a little bit more nitrogen in it. And that's good because it, that'll help push leaf growth, which most of these are mostly uh, leafy plants anyways. So that'll be good for them. So I'm just gonna get to planting and we'll see what it looks like when we're done. Okay, that was a really quick little planting project, but made huge impact in this little space here. So I have them all planted. I watered them in really well. They have their fertilizer and fresh soil. These plants are gonna be really happy here. They'll get the sun, you know, kind of through the middle of the day and they'll have uh, shade in the early morning and shade in the afternoon. 
So I think they'll be great. I don't think I mentioned all of these plants uh, will prefer just kind of your average to medium moisture levels. So when the soil starts to feel dry on top, give it a little water and make sure it's well drained, drained soil so that they're not staying soggy wet and they'll be very happy, just nice and consistent watering that way. Uh, they, like I said, will all do really well until we start to get cold weather that's getting close to that freezing mark. Uh, they'll be a little bit more sensitive when they're young like this and I find they, most plants can handle a little bit more cold as they get older and more established, but they definitely won't want anything anywhere near freezing temperatures. In my climate, none of this is winter hardy. The hookera is actually a perennial plant in zones four to eight, I believe. So if you lived in a zone like that, you could pop it out about a month before your ground is going to be frozen and plant it somewhere you know, where it's going to get the conditions it likes and give it water and time to root in and it should come back for you the next year. Here, I'll probably still try that in a sheltered area, but it likely won't return. I'm in zone three here in Saskatchewan, Canada. The fuchsia, coleus, begonia, and tradescantia could all be taken as cuttings or just dug up and taken inside to overwinter inside. Um, I've had semi good luck with all but the tradescantia. It's a pretty tough plant. Um, sometimes begonias and, and fuchsias do really well for me that way. Usually the coleus will do fairly well as long as it doesn't get any sort of bug infestation, spider mites or anything from being in the dry indoor air. The other two can be a little trickier. So I wound up just kind of really yanking that Triscancia apart uh, because of the shape of this pot. It was hard to get it out. There's kind of three pieces that it broke into. Very little root system on these, but I'll just make sure to keep this, you know, somewhat moist for the next week and they'll root in no problem like that. So I'm not worried. And then I just stuck the other piece in here. I'll water it and take it back inside. Now I have had this pot out um, hardening off outside. Uh, at first I had it in my greenhouse and then I had it outside. Of course when we got cold weather last night it was tucked away in the greenhouse somewhere warm. And I decided to save this Inferno coleus and just put it somewhere else in my, my yard this year. It's a beautiful plant and I'll be sure to find somewhere for it. So I made a bit of a mess on the ground. I'm going to need to sweep up but otherwise this project is done. These will really fill in. These impatiens, they always look a little rough to begin with but uh, they'll fill in and be really nice pop of color in here so I'm really excited to see how this goes and I'll give you updates throughout the season so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time bye